I'm really excited about this Saw film because we're shooting here in Mexico, and that's completely different. And Mexico, to me, uh, is quite exotic. I think not just for U.S. audiences, but also overseas. And I think, you know, we're also returning back to the original Saw. So we're trying to be respectful to the audience, the public, the fanat you know, the fans. And I think they're just going to really enjoy that part of it. I think what's awesome about the traps in this film is the fact that they are interwoven with the story. They're very specific to each character. So I'm not going to say, you know, the trap and the character, but I think they're really well thought out. Uh, additionally, I th you know, we spent uh, several months uh, testing the traps. Uh, we wanted them to be uh, reflective of the original saw, so you see a lot of oxidized metal. You see components that you believe John Kramer's going to be able to actually construct. And we also, you know, connected the medical aspects of the movie, which are very important. This film has a combination of grittiness and like beauty. There's like a beauty in Mexico, the landscapes, the, the, the architecture, but also there's like this intensity of the factory and how that relates to John Kramer's background as an engineer, you know, and I think that that's a great fusion between the two. And I talk a lot with Tobin, you know, we walk through the sets. He says, this, this is, you know, he enjoys the sets and he says, I would really like this. And we talk about what could be realistic and uh, there's a lot of reveals. And one of the things that I think is really important to talk about is that our job as a production designer, my job is that there's an art in horror. I really believe that. So when we're talking about that, we're talking about how much information we give, how much information we hold back, and also what we're going to reveal. That's really important. I think one of the great challenges of this uh, project was really putting together an excellent trap team. But I felt like Tonio Rodriguez was excellent in leading his team. Our team was about six to eight people. You know, we had to fabricate, we had to weld, we had to have painters and uh, prop makers and people that would really be able to test and be knowledgeable and making these mechanisms that were effective and realistic. Uh, we were also really, really um, lucky that we had Hosh, who's in charge of special effects, mechanical effects. And then as it turned out, I think it was, it was a blessing because we weren't really sure what was happening with prosthetics, but as it turned out, Fractured Effects came on board and they were just phenomenal. So I feel like we have this amazing team and I think that the fans are going to be happy, all the audience members, all the people that really love Saw. Kevin, coming from an editing background, is like this major plus for the show and for Saw because he knows what he needs, he knows what we want to put together. Uh, visually and also just like storytelling. I think that's the real key here because we're visual storytellers. Like somebody says, what does a production designer do? I am a visual storyteller. I'm here to help the audience understand the story. We give them color so that they know that they're in Mexico, color so that they know that they're in the United States. You know, we enter this layer that is completely different from the rest of the movie. We want this sense of fish out of water when we come into Mexico. And, you know, talking about cast, you know, that was also the other part that we really love because we're telling the story about, you know, who lives in this hacienda, you know? What is this scam? What is this operating theater? You know, when you go into the operating theater, you have to say to yourself, it was so underground, but it's believable, you know? And it's industrial. And so we just want to make sure all of that was true and that the story points were all there for the audience to be able to understand what they're watching. And Kevin, as an editor, was phenomenal in telling us, this is what we need, this is what we don't need, which is also quite important, too. This is a glass factory that, that we're shooting at, and it became uh, the underground, you know, uh, operating theater that was attached to the Hacienda. So for us, uh, we had to be able to go to a Hacienda that actually did have an industrial space, and so we connected 
both spaces, even though they were far apart. So we had like these plastic entries because we're trying to do a clean room. A clean room is so important for operating theaters. Uh, we chose this space because it was big enough for all of us to shoot our scene here, to take over. They sort of gave us carte blanche to be able to build and construct what we needed. Uh, it wasn't that far out uh, as far as the location is concerned in the city. We had looked at other factories that were outside of the city. You know, Mexico City is 26 million people roughly, you know, and it's just very difficult to go from point A to point B. So it was really important for us to consolidate all of the locations and the work that we were doing because we only have X amount of days to shoot, right? So I would say also just the bones were here. I love this factory. It has the you know the bones of, of for us to be able to create this space to take some of the dressing that's here, you know, to integrate it. We had a lot of really strong uh, sort of hardcore machinery that was here already. They let us oxidize that and make it look as if it was all rusted. So we integrated that. When I think of this film and this experience, I call it spicy saw because it's picante, you know, and it's being shot here in Mexico and it has just so much more color. I feel certainly previous films have color, but I think this one has a little bit more in some ways, you know, and I think people are really going to enjoy it. I've worked with many directors as a stunt performer and everything is different with every person. But Kevin is, is really easygoing. So and he's very clear on what he wants, which made it easy for me because I literally would be asking Kevin, do you want me to change anything or add anything or remove anything from this performance? And he would say, yes, I need, I need her to shake a little more. And by a little, I mean this. And I would tell the stunt, we need to see this on screen. You're doing it, but it's not, not quite what we want to see. So try to do this instead. And, and that did the trick. So he, he, he gave really clear instructions of what he wanted to see, and that makes the work easy for the stunts. It's gonna be a big mess. It's gonna be, it's gonna be gore. There, that, that's the word, the only word that can describe it. It's gonna be gore. I, uh, we, when we did the, the last test, it was a big mess. Everything is going to be covered in blood. And well, yeah, it's going to be a mess. Everybody who likes terror and gore, they're going to be, they're going to be happy. That's for sure. I really love Saw. So. The first time I saw Saw so was the short film. And after that, the movie came out, and I was like, wow, it's amazing. Every single detail, the traps, uh, all the props, they are like toys for me, building them, thinking about how to use them, how to build them. That's what, that's what amazed me. Most fun prop for me was uh, the notebook, his journal. I like to imagine what would he be writing or drawing. I really like to get into the the character, personality, and think about it. I think that watching the, the kind way that Kramer is, is not all bloody and trap and killing. You can see the humanity in him, um, that love Amanda has with him. That's, that's what I believe that all fans will love to see that part of them. Kevin is directing, so 10. I really love him. He's such a wonderful human being. I love the way he um, approaches to us and asks for every detail. Um, he's living so. I know he, he says that he doesn't think about blood at home, but he's always thinking about what would be great for the moment, and he um, make us part of the story. Filming in Mexico gives you a lot of places. You can have a warehouse, a terrible, nasty warehouse. You can have woods, beach, desert, whatever you need. 
obviously I love it when people come to film him because I live here. <laughs> and it's, um, I think it, ha it gives a different look for the world about Mexico because most of the world thinks of Mexico only on a city or a small town. And it's a great place to be filming at. We have a great crews, great people that helps a lot. Kevin, I think he's an amazing person. Uh, he's so commitment with this uh, with this project. Uh, he loved the, the project. He's so clear in what. Uh, the story needs. Uh, he wants. Uh, he always told us uh, what was best for the for the history, for the characters, for the um, what he wants to 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 do at uh, at the camera. And it was very impressive for me to work with someone who knows that uh, that history. Uh, so much. It was the most important thing in this movie. Uh, we start with uh, uh, Alex has the the one only uh, roof that all the Frankies can to keep, because I think uh, is the only one that exists in the world. And then we took the mold and make the other ones because we use one for for John, one for Amanda. And it was a very beautiful process because we, uh, the one that exists is like a, a um, cotton and it was uh, aged and, uh, a, and it still has this process and we try to equal the same process. So it was so exciting, exciting to work with them. I think that John's work is to show the people the importance uh, of the life and take some th risk with the death. And I think the Mexican culture has this kind of romance and, and, and play with the death and, and we love life. And I think it's beautiful for these uh, films to show that, uh, that um, culture. I've obviously wanted to be a part of any Saw movie because I practically grew up loving the genre and the first Saw movie. I mean, it was James Wan, like, revolutionized like the whole genre we know now and it's pretty much part of history I mean being a part of one of these movies is being a part of something so big and like a family so big that it's pretty much an honor but that's what I what I see and I just when I had the chance to be close to the project and maybe like come into it I was thrilled I mean it's, it's amazing what makes this uh, movie special is I think it feels so close to the first two films. It's it's just gonna be like crazy how people will will love it because I don't know just like the tone of it and the way they are working with the traps. It's very similar like to the first installments, and I think that's something like like that people are craving and wanting more like from each saw that happened. And yeah, I think it's a, it's a point where it'll be refreshing like to go back and have something so similar to the original. I think it's gonna, that's what makes this one great. I think the most challenging thing of this project is that like synergy you have to work with like every department. So essentially every trap is made by our department, the trap department, and there are props like stuck into the traps. So that was challenging, like 
from from the start it was like okay so first of all we need to explain what everybody needs to do because what i know as a prop it's a gigantic machine maybe for this one so there's multiple departments involved in so i think the most challenging thing was like coming into the project and having to work out like what is going to be each department's responsibility i think that was a challenge that then became something like very fun. Some of the most interesting props, I mean, just to, it might sound silly, but just to find like the original tape recorders, I mean, that was kind of a challenge and uh, it's, it's always fun like to actually find it and have to go like through eBay and, <laughs> and like just go around looking for it and like get it and like start like making it look just like the, the the originals i think that original tape recorder is pretty cool kevin is the director of the film and he's i mean he's been part of the family the saw family since the beginning and he started out as an editor for the films and it's just crazy like how much information and how clear he has like this vision of how it'll be cut so it's just amazing like watching men like watching Kevin work it's so pragmatic and it's so clear and he knows like okay now I need just to move like two inches here let's do one inch up and boom and he's imagining his edited film while he directs and I think there's like no one that could have done it better like just taken from the Saw family, and he's amazing. It's been it's been it's been great working with Kevin. I think you you can look forward to like super maybe classic, super cringy gore. I mean it's it, it's amazing like what fractured special effects it did. It's it's just it's just crazy, and I think it's super like based on like the original kind of cringe you felt like with all the traps. I think everybody should be, yeah, just looking forward to that. I play two characters. I, the first one, it's, or the main character, it would be Diego. Diego is a taxi driver. And it's the first person that met John at the airport here in Mexico City. And after that, when John came to the clinic to remove the cancer, um, Diego placed himself as a doctor. And the name of this doctor is Dr. Cortez. You know, and this, this doctor, he's a very professional doctor, professional, because he, he doesn't even know how to do a properly a surgery. And after that, when John knows that he was robbed by us and by Cecilia, we are part of the Cecilia team. He put his famous traps on us. The scam is very, very organized. It's, we have a, it's a worldwide scam. And right now we're, we're playing and we're scamming in Mexico, you know? Cecilia has a great and solid team that it's the four of us. And well, basically we have the first part of the payment our, our patients arrive to, to the clinic. We have a very, very specialized clinic here. So we pretend to operate John's, right? And a hundred of people's. And after that, when they notice that they haven't been operated, man, we're done. I mean, you don't know where we're at. But John, as you know, guys, is a very smart character. He always knows where you at. I think that's one of the biggest hits from this saw film. Like, John doesn't have a, a vengeance. Like, he's just doing poetic justice, man. In his peculiar way. Like, you know, he has a style to make poetic justice. But I, I will call it like that. It is very terrifying because suddenly I wake up and I have two pipe bombs in my arms. And these pipe bombs are attacked by certain kind of cable that I can cut with a bistury. So I have to take them off through my flesh. 
So if I don't take them off in a certain amount of time, they will explode. John Kramer is played by Tobin Bell. And one of the things that I learned from, or what I take to, to this, for me in this, in this movie is he was, he, he is a very disciplined actor. He knows his lines. It's an actor who thinks the, his scenes and he's very, and he works from the yes. Like you can drop a proposition in the action and he's like, he follows you and he strikes back and it's very, it's very interesting and it's stimulating to work with actors as, as Toby, you know? And man, he, he leads the scene as, as, as the big star as he is, you know? And, he, and for me, the discipline and, uh, and the humble, it's two things that I really appreciate to work with Toby. Gabriela is played by Renata Baca. She's, uh, she's one of my actresses. We're from, we share generation in a certain way. And well, working with Renata is always a blast of joy and partying and dancing in the campers and chatting, you know? Like, um, we couldn't share too much scenes, even, not even with uh, Renata, Octavio, or Paulette, but there was, uh, I met him, I met these three before and it's it's very happy to share credits with my Mexicans uh, friends you know and they're such good and prepared talents. This next Saw film is directed by Kevin Reuter and man Kevin Kevin is awesome you know he has all the experience from the previous films and he knows how to take you to certain places and he knows what he want to see. I think it's somebody that understands the language of the of the Saw universe and he's very receptive to your uh, propositions as, a, as an actor and that's something that is really joyful and helpful for you for your process. He's a director who works with the yes and he's not close to anything right and he he's very sensitive and he's very I mean, I remember that he wrote us an email before the the movie started shooting here, filming, and he was like, man, I'm so happy that you're with us. And that's a nice touch, you know? Like, you always appreciate it, and you always remember those kind of details, you know? And I think it's the best man to, I think he's the best one to direct this film. The traps are back, and that's something good for the fan base, though, and I think we have a few surprises for the fans, like maybe some of the characters could be back or not. So I think it's a good idea to watch the next Saw film. Things that uh, intrigued me about this story is, uh, is that we go back to what I think the audience most enjoys about John Kramer's character, which is that he's, um, philosophical and and has a strong moral compass but also lives in total contradiction to to what you would think that that compass would be we know from saw 2 that that he really only became the jigsaw uh, after he was diagnosed with cancer and lost his son and and all that sort of thing um, we know that he's pretty much infallible and he's often said if you can anticipate the human mind it leaves nothing nothing to chance so we've we've seen a, a, a kind of very rigid formulation of that notion of his character in all the Saw movies. What I really liked about this one is that we go deep in all those things, but we also do things that I think are very unexpected. I think Tobin was, uh, was really impressed by how much this story truly immerses itself in his character, in his emotional journey. And, uh, you know, it's almost as though the creators realized that it was a big mistake to make a Saw film with no John Kramer and no Tobin in it whatsoever. And so this is almost like a counter reaction to that by let's, let's go all in with Tobin. And so, of course, as an actor, he, uh, he saw this, I'm sure, as kind of his life's great work, <laughs> artistically speaking. I mean, this is his biggest movie by far. So that had to really impress him and intrigue him. He's always sort of the gatekeeper of, of 
being true to this kind of enigma that is the John Kramer character, that he doesn't get revenge, he doesn't kill, even though kind of looks like he does, but still, we don't talk in those terms. It's n they're not traps, they're tests. They're, you know, disciples and, and subjects and, and this sort of thing. So he always makes sure that we're very careful about uh, those aspects of the story. He really likes John's philosophical side and his use of metaphor, which uh, I, think, uh, I think we did a good job with in this film. The Cecilia character is, um, is meant to be a very smart, uh, persuasive scientist from Norway and um, somebody who, again, to go back to this idea that we really wanted it to, to feel ironclad that John Kramer is justified in falling for, uh, for the scam. She's somebody that I think anybody would trust. She has beauty, she has warmth, and, um, and just there's a truthfulness to her. And so we really needed to find that in the actress who plays her. And uh, there were other people that we'd considered beforehand, but none of them quite had that. And she needed to be at least Scandinavian, if not uh, Norwegian. So uh, I was watching this TV show, Ragnarok, on Netflix, that's a Norwegian show. And she's on, and I'm like, that person is really good. And uh, so we reached out to her, and uh, and it worked out really well. And I, I gotta say, like being around Sanuve Lund is like being around one of the Norse goddesses. <laughs> the script for Saw X was originally written to take place in Prague, with the idea being that we would shoot in Bulgaria. Um, and for reasons not entirely creative, it was suggested that we go to Mexico. And as soon as I heard that, I said, money aside, I think that would be the very best place we could possibly shoot and set this story because there's, it's so unexpected and there's so much sort of strange history to Mexico City with uh, the Aztecs and Cortez and, and all that. And, and just the fact that it is such a, such a crazy place um, I really thought not only do we shoot there, but we set it there and we say that this is where we're setting it. And, um, you know, I think, I think it was a fantastic choice. And I, 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 I can't even imagine any other version of this story with, uh, with non-Mexican actors and setting. I wanted these traps to, to work more mechanically in real life than we've ever done before. We've had to uh, frankly use a lot of editing trickery and, and uh, digital uh, visual effects in order to, to overcome the shortcomings that we had on, on production. So for this one, I'm like, let's, let's really make what we're going to shoot and make it work on screen. So our production designer, Anthony Stabley, who uh, is one of the most enthusiastic people I've ever met in my life, he absolutely was for that and he sought out a team among the crew members in, uh, in Mexico City that, that could really pull it off. And that's not to say that everything worked perfectly because it didn't. And as is often the case, there are a lot of wires and uh, people hidden in things that are operating things. One of the most complicated parts of this production and one that we almost died on was prosthetics and finding a prosthetics team that, that could take the actors that um, you know, we'd cast or were about to cast and then form the parts of their bodies using artificial materials and, and getting it onto the set and operating it uh, on the day when we needed it and have things go right and if possible, give us second chances, which often wasn't possible, but um, we, we, we really had trouble at first and the, the, the production stumbled a bit because uh, it turns out that we needed some of these actors six weeks in advance in order for them to be cast and then for the parts to be prepared and then for us to be able to rehearse with the parts before we actually shot. Saw 6, the first one that I directed, was the last one to be shot on 35 millimeter film and I'm really glad that it was, even though it's, it's hard to shoot on film. It's, it's a lot more stressful than digital, but uh, it, th there is great value in the texture that you get uh, from, from film. And once we did Saw 3D, which was shot at, uh, at 2K res on a digital camera, it, we, we started to lose something. And then the subsequent Saw films were also digital. And 
maybe there was a little bit of uh, of filmish grain added afterward, but but frankly not a lot in those films. Um, when I met Nick uh, Matthews, the cinematographer and first camera operator for this movie, we both agreed that, that there was something lost um, after Saw 6 and that we wanted to bring it back. And even though we shot on, on digital, we lit it in a way that we thought emulated the look of the earlier films. And, and also we dirtied it up a bit in post-production. For John Kramer, I have to look for a makeup that in a stage, uh, he is sick as any as every uh, movie. So I have to look for products that make him look sick, but no as a ghost. For Amanda, what I did is well, actually Kevin asked me or told me that we have to go for the look that is close to so too for Amanda. So what I have to do as a makeup artist is to make her look young. And I propose the bangs, I propose uh, to make a makeup that is um, lifting the face. And I think we, good, we make uh, such a good, uh, well, Shani was so happy and I think she feels comfortable. And there is some people that I show pictures and they say, whoa, she looks so good. Once we start to see who is Cecilia, the makeup starts to changing. She has to look stressed. She's like, she's still so, you know, secure and this personality that it, it, it's been in the beginning. But you have to see that she breaks in some point. So I have, I designed to make it look stress, which means sweaty and you know, like their, their, uh, their eyes look deep, uh, their lips is like a little pale, stuff that make it look that it's, it's not the same Cecilia as the beginning. Kevin asked me for the characters is to make it very different between all the looks for the girls. Like we changed the color of the hair of Valentina to, to do not have the same color of in the girls. Like Cecilia is blonde, uh, Valentina is red, and Gabriela is uh, darker color. Uh, no dark, not this one. <laughs> uh, it's darker color. And so then the, the, the audience don't confuse like who is who. The makeup and prosthetics, yes, we have to work and know each other until which point it's my turn and which point is their turn. So we have to make, you know, like be partners, be a team all together, even, even uh, also wardrobe, also like all together, you know, and, and sometimes make decisions at the moment. And sometimes it's like, it's your turn, it's my turn, blah, blah, blah. It's a connection. We have uh, such a good industry here in Mexico to film. All the creative, uh, creative things of, of us Mexicans, it's, it's incredible. And it's just, it's very unique. Like you're not gonna see this kind of crew anywhere, you know? And, and we're so happy and so laugh. And, and, uh, and, and what I say before, I feel grateful to work as with, with all the, pro the, produ the American production and with the actors. Um, so happy. There's a lot of heart to this story. There's a lot of John Kramer feeling taken advantage of. There's a lot of John, you, you learn more about John Kramer in this movie than you have in the entire franchise. This kind of sets up why John Kramer became Jigsaw and what he is trying to accomplish. John Kramer has cancer. John Kramer meets with his doctor, has an, M an MRI. It's not good. The doctor tells him he has a very limited time to live. John Kramer has found out that there is an experimental, uh, out of the country process that you can, they're, they're having great success with. He goes to Mexico City where they're hosting this, this, this surgery. He goes and does it and he finds out that it's a fraud. We originally wrote the script or 
worked with the writers that wrote the script, because we, we don't write it, but uh, Amanda wasn't really in it. And then we kind of realized that Tobin's 80 years old. People would look at it, how's John Kramer doing all this stuff that he's doing? And we realized we needed to bring in somebody. I think it was then that Oren came up with the idea of like, why don't we make the person who's disguised, why don't we make that Shawnee in the, the script? and then we'll reveal it at some point during the movie. And the audience eats it up when they realize that that's who was doing all this stuff. Something that was really shocking to Mark and I is either Saw 2 or Saw 3 were at Comic-Con. And now we've really got a lot of momentum. They've made the room bigger every time and the walls keep flying out. And people, we, Mark and I were on the dais and they were talking and they kept talking about the hero and the protagonist and the hero. And we never really looked at it like he was a hero, but he was a hero to people. And not because he's a murderer, not because he's, you know, whether John Wick's a hero, whether, you know what I mean? So, but it really kind of changed, at least for me personally, and I know I've been, you know, Mark and I've talked about it, how we looked at, at Jigsaw or John Kramer. And, but they talked about the hero, the protagonist, and it really got us. So that was, a, for me, a big change of the way we, thought about the films. Saw X was directed by Kevin Greitert, who directed two previous Saw movies and basically has edited pretty much all of them. He knows the franchise better or as well as Orrin and myself, if not better. And uh, he was our first and only choice to direct this movie. The traps you see in most of the movies are John trying, they're, they're John's traps. And this is John is so devastated by the news and by what happens that he's actually making traps uh, that for them. These are their these are their traps because what they did to him personally. Whether you're the anesthesiologist, whether you're the doctor, whether you're the the person that's housing you for this scam, and I think he makes them very personal. And the other thing we tried to I think the traps started getting over the top. And one of the things we we really looked at is is bringing the traps down in scale and size to where you could basically, you know, everything you need to make these traps is in Home Depot. We really did this movie for the fans. We really tried to pay them back for the loyalty and the fans that have been there since Saw One. And that's why there's a little, there's the Easter eggs, there's throwbacks to other, we just really tried to say, you've asked for this movie, we're making this for you. And, and to me, the most rewarding experience is when you see the movie finished opening weekend with an audience and they're jumping at the right places, they're laughing at the right places, they care. You're like, okay, guess what? Yeah, this was all worthwhile. I know they were looking for somebody in a, who had shot in Mexico before and I had shot in a movie in Mexico. Um, probably four years ago or five years ago. So I'd worked with a lot of crew in Mexico and I, I was not scared about shooting in Mexico. I was excited about it. I knew that our resources would go further. I knew there was incredible crew. I knew that it would bring a certain, um, it would bring a certain tonal palette to the movie and it would also give us the opportunity to set the movie in this sort of interesting locale and, you know, something that Saw needed and hasn't, fully been able to explore in a lot of the films is just because so many of them have been set in isolated, limited kind of spaces. This gave us a chance to kind of open up the world, go into other locations, see a lot of new things. When Kevin and I started talking about the janitor trap, you know, one thing we wanted to do was, first of all, this is the audience's first trap in the movie. It is what is going to sort of keep their asses glued to the seats. And it is something that needs to make kind of a, you know, brandish kind of a, it needs to be a big moment and, the, and suck the audience right in. Uh, so that was like, my, for me, the starting point was just how do we create a scene and a trap that excites the audience about where they're headed and what's gonna happen and how much they're gonna get to see into John's world and his head. So when I started thinking about it, I still took the same approach of the traps are all the accentuated, heightened version of the real space. 
So every trap is, you know, we have base lighting inside of the warehouse, but when we see the trap, it's like there's an edge to it. It's a little bit more heightened. I saw the location, the warehouse, for the first time, and I remember walking into it and just being like, okay, this is gonna be my home for a while. And, you know, I walked around with a DSLR and just shot like a bunch of images around the place just to get a sense of it and sort of to start to take it in. But, you know, in order to figure out the lighting for the space, I knew I was gonna do practical lighting for a lot of the lighting because we wanted to shoot very 360, which Kevin had never had the chance to do before. And I've done it on a couple projects. You know, I still, I will still shape the lighting and control it, but I'm trying to design a world that you can walk into and put a camera in and it'll photograph well. We approach the beginning kind of more from a drama, you know, this point of view of a drama. I'm still trying to bake in deep shadows. I'm still trying to bake in darkness because this is Saw and also this is a world, you know, of discovery. And the audience is going along for that journey of discovery as well. Um, and then we move into Mexico, which is suddenly, it's vibrant, it's lush, it's green, it's red, it's, you know, it's like these kind of, um, sort of beautiful yellows and golds, you know? And then once you hit the scam, in, or once you hit this recognition of the scam, we really wanted to create something that was, you know, a lot of the conversation before that is about geography. It's how do we connect the Hacienda to the warehouse? Because they're two completely different places and locations. How do we shoot them in a way that those feel completely fluid? This movie had more interdepartmental conversations than any other project I'd worked on. Once you get into a trap, you're dealing with special effects, prosthetics, VFX, production design, lighting ultimately, and cinematography, and all of those elements have to you know, come together. Costumes as well, like there's so many different elements, and all of that's designed to capture this performance that's in front of you. As well as, I mean, we had a lot of stunts in all of these traps as well. So I think what was exciting about this and also challenging was there were a lot of interdepartmental meetings, bringing everybody together to talk about every trap in specificity from every department's perspective. I've had so many goosebump moments on this movie. You know, it, from the very beginning, the moment that I got the script, because I remember when I read the script and I told Kevin this, I don't know if I told him this in my interview or after I got hired, but I was like, to me, this feels like the best script of the franchise. And I thought we had the chance to make the best movie of the franchise because no other part of the franchise has gotten to completely invest the audience in Jigsaw and Tobin Bell and John Kramer. And all of us want more of him and wanted to see more of him and know more about him as a character. So from the very beginning, I thought we have a chance to do something really special and really great. And I felt so lucky to be in part, to, I felt so lucky to be a part of that. I play a character called Mateo and um, he's a vet. Uh, he's a veterinarian and um, but he gets involved in some shady business and that puts him in the map for, that, put, that puts him on the map for um, for Kramer I guess and to be you know now involved in this new uh, game. This movie starts when, when John finds out that he has terminal cancer so he's trying to uh, you know he's tried uh, normal treatments that haven't worked for him so he hears about this revolutionary treatment that's not been approved by the FDA and that can't be done in the United States. And he thinks that it's his only shot at surviving cancer. So he tracks down the people that do this and he arrives in Mexico City, undergoes this very expensive treatment only to find out that it was all a scam. And that really pisses him off and sets off the whole movie because he wants to make sure that everybody that was involved in that pays for it. I think John, at first he feels very betrayed, you know, like he, that, that it, there's a lot of money that he spent, but then when he finds out that this has been going on, that this is a scheme that's happened to other people, it makes him even more angry because he feels that 
uh, all of this team of, of, of people have been, you know, taking away the most important thing that a person has, which is hope. Um, so it gets a little bit philosophical because these traps become more about um, about teaching the people that are in them the value of life and the value of truth and the value of hope. My trap, I was terrified from, from, from the moment I read it the first time, from, from, uh, from the time I met uh, Kevin, our director, and we were kind of running through it uh, during the audition process. It's, it's really terrifying because Mateo is tied up in, in, in this wheelchair and he's wearing this, um, this, this kind of weird crown, he can't move. And what he has to do is basically uh, pull out a piece of his brain and make it dissolve just in time. And if that happens, he can survive. So there's a lot of blood involved. It's about, you know, opening your skull up and, and but you're tied to a chair and time's running out and you're sweaty and you're scared and you're shaking. And it's, yeah, <laughs> it was, it was, it was fun to make. Uh, but I think it's going to be terrifying to watch. John Kramer is played by Tobin Bell, reprising his role um, in this movie. And, um, you know, it was, it, was really, it was really cool to get to meet him and get to work with him. Um, he was kind of, um, he, was, he was very uh, supportive of, you know, this you know, all of the actors in the movie. And you know, as as in a in a way, the leader of this of this of this project, he was um, he 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 made sure to keep us all together, and he was always, you know, you wouldn't imagine the the the, the generous human being that's behind this character, because he's so you know he was so concerned with making all of us feel like a part of the of the family. Amanda's played by Shawnee Smith who's also back reprising her role. And what's awesome about her character is that she doesn't care. I mean, she's just, she's just all in and she firmly believes in John Kramer's philosophy. I mean, she, she really um, has become a sort of disciple. And, 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 and so this, this belief that, that she has in, in, in him and his methods make her a very dangerous opponent in, in this game. The movie's being directed by Kevin. When I met him, I was like, I can't believe this guy is directing, you know, this kind of a movie because he's the sweetest guy in the world. Um, he's very concerned with, you know, the actors feeling safe all the time and feeling, um, and feeling, you know, protected by, by, by the crew and by, you know, making sure that nothing goes wrong on set. And you would, if you saw him on the street, you would never believe that he's the guy that directs a Saw movie, you know? He's just uh, a really, really kind and sweet guy. Well, I think it's gonna be, you know, a great treat for Saw uh, movie fans. And for those people that have never seen the movies, I think it's a great movie to jump into the Saw universe. Um, and you know what, they, they can look forward to all the things that make the Saw movies fun, you know. There's going to be amazing traps. It's a very interesting, very unexpected story. I don't think people, um, I don't people, I don't think people are expecting uh, that we're sort of shifting the timeline of, 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 of the events. So yeah, that's, that's going to be fun. Approaching a film like this and thinking about how to approach these effects started early on from Justin Raleigh and Fractured Effects. They met originally with Kevin, the director, and the producers, and they told him what they wanted. So they started a build list, and then they contacted me, and would you be interested in going down to pull these, you know, what we call gags off? And I'm like, well, let me see what they are first. So once I started going through the build list and seeing what they actually wanted, looking at storyboards, there were definitely some oh shit moments. How am I going to reset this head on camera? How are we going to cut off 
a leg, spoiler alert, on camera. So those were the biggest, biggest things on this film for me, trying to wrap my head around how I'm gonna do that. Kevin has been a pleasure. He's very open to suggestions and has even let me step in and say, let's shoot it like this. This is the way it was designed and what you previously discussed that meant the most to you. So these are the angles we need to shoot it at to make it look the most realistic. He's been open about everything. There's some other traps that you'll see that, you know, he literally was, Ozzy, how do we pull it off? And I'm like, you don't get that a lot of time with, with directors. So it's been a pleasure. And I think that we've been able to accomplish everything that he's wanted from the previous discussions. You know, there's always a little more he wants to add here and there, a couple of different shots. So we've had to kind of roll with the punches. But so far, I think, I think he's very happy. I honestly think this is going to be the most over-the-top Saw movie that you've seen, for sure. I think Saw so was a game changer in horror films. We all remember the ending, the music, and that feeling of being trapped and trying to figure out how to get out of the game. I think so, it's addictive, and we always want more. John comes to Mexico City for an experimental treatment for his cancer, and everything is going right until something happens. <laughs> And he suddenly decides to take a new approach on this treatment, if you know what I mean. I play Valentina. She's a nurse and she's kind of tough. <laughs> she gets involved in some questionable experiments that can potentially be very beneficial, but also quite dangerous. <laughs> So Valentina is a risk taker and she also has a secret. I think to expose the error of their ways by forcing them to value not only their lives, but everyone's. Kevin was amazing to work with. As an actress, you want someone who knows exactly what they want, and he does. He knew what he wanted to see. And he had an incredible understanding of the characters. It was truly, truly a pleasure to work with him. The fact that it happens between the first and the second movie gave us the opportunity to enjoy John and Amanda in their prime era again. And that's exciting, <laughs> especially for true fans. You can expect a lot of horror, traps, scary entertainment, and as always, a great twist. <laughs> I think you will see one of the best movies of the Soul franchise. This movie, you're going to be able to see uh, John. I think you're going to see a John that you haven't, like you have never been, never seen before. Um, so he's dealing with with his um, with his cancer, and so uh, he's trying to find a way to feel better. And then he meets a guy, and the guy tells him that he has the right fit for him. And so he finds this doctor that's called Doctor Cecilia. And so uh, she tells him that she has an open space in Mexico for him to get better and to do a surgery. And so he comes to Mexico and the story begins, yes. <laughs> I play Gabriela, Gabriela, um, and she's a girl, she lives in Mexico, and she's uh, part of uh, Cecilia's team and she helps her uh, getting all the patients better. And so there's uh, where she meets uh, John. John founds out um, that everything was a lie. And so he goes back to the, to the place where, where, where we did the procedure. And then um, he starts to take one, uh, one by one of us. And then he starts to play some games with us. And it's so scary and it's so bloody and yeah. 
I think what what John wants to accomplish with the traps, it's like just, I, I truly believe he he thinks that what he's doing, it's just, it's almost like a gift to others, you know, like I'm giving you the second chance to really appreciate life and like really appreciate uh, what you have um, in a very crazy way. But I truly believe that he he he's like super into what he's saying and like, yeah, I think that's why he does it that way, like it has to be painful so that you learn. Tobin Bell, uh, who plays John Kramer, I mean, I think everyone knows who John Kramer is and who Billy the Puppet is, it's like, even if you haven't seen the movie, it's just like, you know who, who he is. So um, for me, I, I was very exciting to, to get to meet him and to work with him and so when I, when I got on set, the, the first, even when we were doing the, the reading of, of the script, I was just mesmerized uh, on how he takes things, like he's really, he really cares about it, you know? And you can see that um, every time, when, when you're on set with him, like even if they say cut, he's, he doesn't cut. Like he's, he's there and he's thinking about things and he looks at you and it's like, like he looks at you and you're like, I don't wanna play a game, please don't, please don't. So it's, <laughs> it's amazing and he's also a very, like he, he really makes you feel safe and he loves to, to, to he, he loves to care about the little details. Shani Smith, she plays um, Amanda and I mean, I, she's, she's an incredible person. Like she's not just an amazing actress, but she's an amazing person. And from the first moment, I mean, it's, it's cool because our characters have like, are like kind of this mirror in a way. So she has like a special connection with my character and mine, of course. With, with hers, but um, she's just so sensible. Like the way she lives life, like you can see her, like even when she's on the makeup track and, and she's like having fun with everyone and talking, she's like so funny and she's like so sweet. And, and I remember the day I met her, she like, she just came to me and she was like, this is, this is something important for my character and this is something important for us. And like, she just looked at me and smiled at me and she was like so sweet and she grabbed my face and she was like, you're so good. And I was like, okay, I love you already. So yeah, she's, she's an amazing person and, and also an amazing, amazing actress. Cecilia is played by Sinobi and she's just, I mean, I'm just amazed on how gorgeous she is. She's so gorgeous and she's so amazing and she's she's so funny, but I think she has her own way to be funny because she's like, she can be like this person, she, she looks at you and she talks and, and we've been like the whole, um, during the shooting of the movie, we like when, when we didn't have anything to do, we were just like talking, we started talking about life and about love and about relationships, like we love to do that. But um, I, I think she brings something super powerful to the character because she, she has this energy and this presence whenever she's on set and she's saying things like, it's just like, you, you just have to look at her. So um, I'm, I'm really, really grateful to be working with her. The director of this movie is Kevin Gruterd and he's just, he's lovely. He's lovely, he's just, I, this movie and this, uh, the Saw movies are some hard movies to watch in a way because of all of the blood and the, you know, the traps and everything. And I think that that and that energy on set needs someone who's like, you know, like chill and that someone that makes you feel safe. And I think that that's what Kevin is. I think that he knows what he wants. And so he's like super, you know, like he, he, he talks to you and he makes you feel, as I said, he makes you feel like safe and calm. And I think that's very important because like, it's not just a regular movie, you know, like you're doing some crazy things and you're like giving your all, talking about your emotions and like you're there like super exposed in a way and he really makes you feel like, okay, don't worry, we, we got you, we got you. And so, and I think he's, he's super talented and I think that he really understands the Saw movies and, and what people wants to see and what he wants to see and, and, and I think that he's the perfect piece to get all this together. He's an amazing director. I think it, it just, it takes everything a fan could ask for. Like, I think the, the, the characters, the traps, everything is just like what people want to see. And there's a lot of blood and I think it's a very, very good movie.
it's super fun to be able to come all the way back to the beginning. But leave that to the creators, writers, and fans. I mean, anything can happen with this in the Saw world. Even this, you know, 18 years later, it's crazy. But it's, it's a powerful, this, the story's compelling and the fans are just like, the Saw fans, next level. What's super exciting about this for the true fans is that you're, you have John and Amanda, which, you know, like the idea of the, the male and female of Jigsaw is super interesting. Everybody dies at the end of three. So, you know, how many flashbacks can you have? And then someone had the genius idea to go back to this time. And like, I mean, it's like unreal. I play Amanda Young and uh, she's very smart. She's been um, wounded. And John Kramer brings her back to life, kind of like a, like a doll that's been turned off, you know? She gets brought back to life and she loves him, like wholeheartedly. And uh, that's, amazing and terrifying and torture for someone like Amanda. John is, comes to Mexico City in search of cancer treatment. Um, you know, not FDA approved cancer treatment. And for someone like John Kramer to pursue that, it must be compelling, you know. He does his research. And there's a moment he realizes what, that he's been duped. And uh, it's really hard for someone like John Kramer. You know, his, his hope clouded his vision a little. And they, the game was pretty, you know, their racket was pretty compelling. But uh, it's a devastating for him and really pisses me off. It's hard for Amanda because she loves John so much and to see him hurt like that and, and vulnerable like that, there's like, there's a, there's a battle cry in there, like a, but at the same time, you can't forsake that philosophy, you know, that like every, every human being deserves a chance. And, and he's in the business of saving souls. And, uh, and she's in that business enough, you know, he really does plan on her continuing this work of his. And he wouldn't give that to her if he didn't think she could do it or that she believed in it. And, um, so that, that is bigger than the anger until at a certain point, you know, then you see like, there's no, there's no uh, redemption <laughs> for several characters, but still, everybody deserves a chance. And uh, that's how he rolls. Tobin Bell plays John Kramer, and that is just the luckiest thing that happened to the Saw franchise. Because from day one, the body on the floor, he was meticulous 
I mean, he is scientific. He's scientific about his work, but then he's just like, psst, pours his heart into, but he's worked out. And he was that, but he insisted on being the body on the floor in part one. I still don't know exactly how they came to him, but I just know that, thank God they did. I mean, it was probably meant to be, but that was definitely, because he's such a big part of, um, of the longevity of this franchise. Kevin G is directing this film. It's really fun to work with him on this. They couldn't have hired a better director because imagine like everything this man has to hold in his head all day long, like 18 years of details, but he's the right man for the job. You know, if anyone could hold all that in his head and be editing while he's filming this, it's him. This has been so many years now of conventions and meeting the fans of Amanda. There are like generations of them now. I just started calling them this past year the tribe of Amandas because they're very similar. They're all super smart and super like, like tender hearted but strong and they connect with each other and and I love them so much and I love Amanda and it's like I never would have thought that I could come back 18 years later and like because I do like I hold all of them and her in my heart and it's like I get to come back and like sing a love song to these young women including the <laughs> young woman I'm playing, but it's like, what an unreal opportunity. Leave it to the Saw world. I play Parker Sears, who is um, suffering from thyroid cancer. And he arrives at this facility in Mexico City to, to have treatment and um, and that he meets John Kramer, who's also, as, as we know, um, a cancer sufferer, survivor, I guess. And um, so it's really about how he, um, he, he comes into this world um, ho hoping to find a cure and to give him a, a new lease on life. And uh, the story for him is, is how that pans out. Cecilia Peterson is the daughter of, a, of an eminent scientist from Scandinavia. And, sh and uh, she's constructed this program to help cure um, cancer victims. Um, it's based in Mexico City and they use alternative therapies and, and, and you know, therapies that, that her father had developed. Um, and the idea is to bring hope to people who'd previously lost all hope of survival. And uh, John gets caught up in this because as, as we know from the other films, he's, he's been battling this for a long time, and uh, this looks to be a, a, a solution. They've constructed this elaborate scheme to fleece people of their, of their money um, by offering bogus cancer treatments. There is no cancer treatment. They're all going to die, and uh, John's one of them. And uh, so, uh, so it's... It, the. the the coolness of the stories is how they reveal themselves and how we find out about what they're really doing. Tobin Bell um, is John Kramer. Um, at this point, he doesn't really play John Kramer. He kind of is. He embodies John Kramer. And uh, what's amazing uh, in watching him work is how he makes it all make such sense. His rationale and his, the philosophy behind um, his actions and his behavior and uh, his, the, the traps and the people he focuses on and, and targets um, all makes sense. Whether you agree with his tactics, his, 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 the, the things he devises to, to deal with these issues is, is another matter, but 
but he's validated everything he does. He's rationalized it in his mind. He knows what they've done. He knows they deserve to be punished for it. He wants to take people who have committed um, crimes of various descriptions, and he wants to um, give them a chance to atone for those crimes um, by sacrificing some of themselves. And so there's always a way out. The question is whether they are prepared to take the way out or not. And obviously those ways out um, involve pain. The traps, they are the, the, the work of some, some, um, some seriously disturbed minds. Um, uh, what's really cool about this is, is, is who gets involved, who, who, who's trapped, why they're trapped, what they have to do to get out of the traps, how they get out, the ones who do get out, you know, it, it's, it's, you, you never know who's, who's going to survive, who's, who's not. It's a really cool story. Um, the, um, the, the setup and the, and the, the, the journey of, of all the characters is, is, um, is, is intriguing, it's uh, complex, there are surprises around every corner. Um, and, you, and you really kind of dig deeper into the psyche of, of uh, um, Amanda and John and, and the other characters, myself. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's the, 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 it feels to me like this film digs deeper than, than uh, the, the other ones. This, this feels, um, story-wise, like a deeper story. The relationship between John and Cecilia intensifies during the movie or throughout the movie. Cecilia is not one of his ordinary victims, so to speak. She challenges him. She questions his whole code. She manipulates him. She tries to break him. She kind of breaks down his whole system of beliefs, his values, the reason why he's doing this his whole purpose of being Jigsaw. When John meets Cecilia Peterson for the first time, there is an instant connection between the two. There is warmth, there is trust, uh, and uh, she's super professional, she's super sympathetic. They go through the surgery, and he's leaving his life into her hands. And then he discovers that she's a complete fraud. Tobin Bell, is a legend and you get a bit starstruck actually when you meet him the first time and he became kind of my guide and mentor into this Saw universe uh, and because Cecilia and John's relationship is so intense we, we worked a lot together offset we met we read we discussed on the phone we really wanted this fight between Cecilia and John to work and to be, be as true as possible. Uh, so he's, he's a wonderful actor, but mainly he's, he's a wonderful person that I've, I've started to love very much. Working with Kevin was amazing. Uh, and in a Saw movie, there is a lot going on. There is a lot of technical stuff. There is a lot of props. There are, the scenes are complicated. It's ensemble scenes. You have the traps. There are so many peculiar things that got to be right. But I never saw him lose his nerve once. He, the way he orchestrates the whole thing, so calm, it's, it's just impressive. Coming into this project was like entering another dimension. The Saw universe is so, <laughs> so apart from everything you know, and it's so defined. It's got its rules, uh, it's got its methods. It's, it's like both uh, Oren and Mark, the producers, they're so hands-on. Mark would be on set almost all the time. 
and he knew exactly what we were making. And if something was not right, he would cut it and we would tweak it so that it, it, it kind of manifested what the Soar New Universe is supposed to be. And this made us feel very safe, I think. As an audience, you are also confronted with why do I love to watch this? Why do I like to see people suffer? Why is kind of, why is torture some kind of aesthetic thing? How can it, yeah, is blood beautiful? I don't know. So we're confronted with this, this darkness that's inside all of us. And I think that's, I think that's some of the, the, the coolest thing about this movie, actually. It makes it different to the other movies as well. John Kramer, he has been a civil engineer and an architect uh, for almost 40 years. Um, and what interests me um, about him uh, is that he is interested in many, many, many things uh, from a point of view of philosophy, theology. He's extremely well read, very intelligent, uh, and very committed, um, unlike many of us who look around us and complain about the world uh, or some aspect of the world but do nothing. He does something. Whether you agree with what he does or not is another subject entirely. It's my job to flush him out, to be on his side, and to um, draw audiences in to the thought process. Traps. John doesn't view them that way. He views them as test situations. And um, I know it's easy and convenient because they are as terrifying as they are uh, to think of them as traps. He doesn't, everyone has an opportunity to win the game and to succeed. John's a mag magician in a certain way. Sometimes what you see is not what you get with him. So, so let's assume though that what you saw uh, in Saw 3 was actually happening. Uh, then we've had to, to create moments uh, at different points in time. Uh, uh, and this one um, this one, I would say, happens somewhere between Saw 1, Saw 2, somewhere in that, in, that, in that zone. Amanda is John's apprentice, and like any apprentice, good apprentice. Um, the apprentice wants to learn the trade of a skilled craftsman from the ground up. And that's uh, what Amanda Young uh, does. Uh, and uh, uh, John, uh, she successfully uh, won her game back at the beginning of Saw. And um, uh, you know, I don't know if you know Amanda's background, but she um, had a drug problem and was somewhat of a uh, 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 problematic, you know, struggling with her life. And uh, John kind of got her on, on this track where she, she, um, she was living on the street for a while, and, uh, but she, he gave her a room in, off of his workshop, and uh, she has been there uh, to help him on many occasions. I think what, what John likes about her is that he's been able to corral her and pull her in and get her to um, use her amazing strength and energy in a more focused way.
and in a less self-destructive way. Um, um, and uh, Shawnee Smith uh, uh, developed the character uh, uh, at the beginning, uh, Saw One, and uh, um, she uh, is very important in John's life. When they cast her in the role that she's cast in, uh, I, w I took one look at her and I was like, oh my God, she is perfect. And she has been. Kevin Groydert um, is directing this film um, with uh, very strong credentials. Uh, he uh, comes from editing, uh, has uh, been involved with Saw since the beginning, um, uh, edited and directed. Uh, he's edited most of the Saw films, directed a few of them, so nobody knows Saw the way, the way Kevin knows Saw. And um, he brings, uh, I have, I, I, I did another film with Kevin, a previous Saw film with Kevin, but I've gotten to know him more in this because I'm in so much of this film. So we've, we've had uh, lots of, I've gotten to, to have a working relationship with him, a deeper working relationship with Kevin. Uh, he's, very detail oriented, he's very shot oriented, very edit oriented. He knows what the shot he needs and wants because he knows how to make this film cut together so it has impact. And uh, that's a marvelous thing. It all starts with the writing and the script uh, for this particular film is very strong. Uh, um, perhaps one of the strongest Saw films. Uh, um, Josh Stahlberg and Pete Goldfinger did a marvelous job. And when I first read the script, I was uh, very impressed with it. And uh, uh, it was in very, very good shape, very tight. And uh, uh, the casting has been wonderful. So uh, we have a good film here. We've been able to create a layer in the Saw films that make people think. Not only is it a rollicking uh, roller coaster ride of, uh, of amazing special effects and, uh, and situations and surprises and twists and turns, but we've been able to raise some subjects that make people go, oh, oh, that's what, what he's... You know, and, and when you contrast a moment like that with, with what else is going on in the film, and all of a sudden this unexpected moment happens where people go, oh, it's, it's, it, it, the moment resonates.